Happy Valentine's Day. Good morning. It's Backstory with Dr. B. And I'm going to go over dome lights on my W124 1987 300D Mercedes. Thought I'd rattle that off real quick because I've got it memorized. Um, I got two dome lights when I went to pick your part, as you may have noticed in a previous video. I don't know how well they work, but they look better than the one that I've got up in my uh, car. And the one on my car doesn't even work. I've got nothing. I, I can get the light to turn on completely if I move the switch to one position, but it flickers. Uh, it won't work with the door control. So most of the time I'm just sort of pawing around in the dark. Even my headlight uh, button, uh, the light switch button, uh, the bulb is burned out. I mean, yeah, it's a 30 plus year old car. So I can't even find, I'm groping in the dark trying to find the light switch and everything. So I'm gonna get all these little convenience features taken care of. So I'm gonna switch camera angles with you, show you the features, uh, and, uh, and then a little quick disassembly. The one thing I couldn't find on video, I found a video on how to take the dome light out. Um, I think there was something about popping open the little thing where you could get to the bulbs. And then the, the weirdest thing was getting the internal cabin temperature sensor out of the out of the thing. And thank God I had one to work on at the kitchen table last night and fiddle around with it. I was determined not to break it because everything is just as brittle as snot with these things. Dried snot anyway. And um, so uh, I'll show you uh, the trick for that. And I, I did it once. I, I hope it's a reliable, a reliable thing for you guys. So I'm going to pause you, change camera angles. Alrighty. Well, welcome back. Sorry about the little delay there. Okay. So these are the two uh, interior lights that I picked up at uh, Pick Your Part. And I'm just going to give you a little highlight on uh, their features. So this is this, the, this is the moonroof control. Pushing it in, oh, let's look, see what the manual says. I have the original instruction manual. Uh, pushing the pin in raises, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, switch in. This raises the rear moonroof. Pulling it up lowers the, mirror, uh, the rear of the moonroof. And let's see here, taking it to the top direction, slides the roof open and this closes the roof. Now the one on uh, the second one of the uh, uh, the dome lights I've got, it's got sort of a broken button, so it just kind of looks looks crappy, but the mechanism seems to seems to be okay. I've already pulled that previously. All the tabs broke off, but I wanted to include it. Um, that's why I got the second one. I picked this one and I'm like, oh, this one's even better. I'll bring both home. We'll see what works. I might have to cannibalize from one to the other, and that is a total car guy thing. So in terms of the dome light controls, which mine don't work, uh, switch all the way to the top, position one, interior and reading light on continuously, interior and reading light off continuously, no matter what you do with the door. This is just for the reading light. Ooh, such glamorous lighting. I can't imagine that it projects much, but we'll see. Mine doesn't work, so I can't really tell. And then this is normal operation. The dome light comes on when the car door opens. My car does not do that. So that's an outline of the features. To flip it over, I've kind of got this one stripped back. But just to reorient you, this is the gray is the headlight switch. The, uh, the dark one is the dome light switch. This is the access panel to get into the dome light. Let me get that guy open there. All right, there we go. Let's take a look. I hope you can see this okay. The main dome, uh, the main light goes in, into this panel. It's one of those little two-bladed ones. Uh, this one didn't have one in it, but the other one came with an LED bulb, which I'm going to be trying in my car. This is the reading light bulb. I saw, I saw a thread where a guy, uh, how do you get that bulb out of there? It's like, dude, it's not rocket science. You can s clearly see the peg right here. See that little peg? Obviously, it's one of those bulbs you push in and turn. Boop, and then pull out. Isn't that adorable? I'm going to probably get an LED for that, although this looks like a stout little bulb. Look at that manufacturer. Oh, it's got a little glass tip on it and everything. Heaven knows how long old this is. I'll give you the I'll give you the bulb sizes here toward the end of the video. I wrote them down somewhere, but I don't remember what they are. Anyway, it's an easy it's an easy light bulb switch in that respect. Uh, interestingly enough, this panel is the seat belt warning thing. It's got a little picture of an unfastened seat belt, exactly like you would see in an old airplane, uh, and then uh, the passenger and a little symbol for the for the individual with the seat belt. 
there's three lights. One does the bulb, uh, one does the driver, one does the passenger. I guess that's the right orientation. Um, mine never works. I've, I've never seen that light go off. But you get to those tiny little bulbs through this side panel here. So these little tabs get pulled back. They release this panel. And these little tabs are super brittle. I really suspect I'm probably going to have to glue some of this crap back after replacing bulbs once they make sure they work over. Whoops. Uh, so anyway, so we've got this panel. And check out these three little lights. Aren't they adorable? Three little teeny tiny bulbs. And inside of this is a block of clear resin. Let's see. When I dropped it, they all, they all fell out. Let's see. There we go. Kind of clicks in there. And I want to pause you here. Okay, got this big honking flashlight. Maglight. So primitive. The LEDs are way better, but you can hit somebody with one of these too. All right, so I don't know if you can see it, but uh, there's the the red of the seat belt. Isn't that cool? Oh, there it goes. Oh, look, it's new. You're not seat belted. Safety for everyone, but how, how can they even say that? They didn't even give the passenger, there it goes. They didn't even give the front seat passenger an airbag. You know, it's like uh, somebody did a comedy routine about that or something, you know, where it's, it's like, oh, thank God this life-saving device, you know, saved me, you know, but my passenger died. <laughs> Why would I want to continue to live? Now, these little bulbs just pull right out. You got to be gentle. Give it a little wiggle. I was afraid it would shatter under my hand because it's stuck in there pretty freaking tight. And obviously, because, ah, there it goes. Now, under intense magnification, where's the, where's the camera light? There it is. I don't know if this will focus or not. If you get, I, I, I've had cataracts. I've had cataract surgery and two retinal surgeries, so I can't see which side of the of the plug that the wire is on. But the wire it goes on one side on the left and the other side on the right. You want to make sure and get it oriented so that it hits the terminals because there's a brass terminal here and here. You just want to make sure you got the wire on the right spot or it's not going to work. I don't know if they make LEDs for this, and honestly, I don't even know if I care, you know, because it's just a seatbelt warning light, but I want it to work because I think it's kind of a cool feature. So I'll put that in later because I can't see the ball. All right, so that's how you get that guy out of there. Then you got to stick this piece back in here, and then it just kind of clicks with the indents on these tab sides. And these tabs are super brittle, and it might break. So, you know, that's on you. It's the same thing that uh, happened with this guy. I was, here's a wiring harness that I just clipped. Uh, when I pulled this out, there's two little tabs right here and they just they just shattered. I mean, it's, you know, 30 something year old plastic. Um, this particular housing has fewer cracks than this housing and it's got these two lines intact here. So I may try and make this guy work. And just to show you, He's still got that original bulb and he's got that LED bulb. I don't know about the color profile on this. I don't want to go bright white 6000. I'm going to probably go 5500 to keep a little bit of kind of an 80s appropriate glow, but with a higher level, you know, of light altogether. So that's sort of what I'm shooting for for that. Now, the hardest part was this doggone thing right here. This is the sensor uh, opening. Uh, there is a tiny vacuum pump tiny little air pump underneath the dash somewhere that connects to a hose. I cut the hose when I pulled this guy out. One of them had a hose on it, one of them didn't. Anyway, this hose goes underneath the dash and the little pump underneath the dash pulls air through here and across this sensor. And the car, when you set the automatic temperature control, the, that sensor tells the car what temperature it is and then the computer adjusts the temperature accordingly because Mercedes will not allow you to manually really control the operation of the HVAC unit. It's The computer's going to do it and it's going to do what you tell, you tell it, but it's going to do it based on input from this sensor. And so I'm gonna, I know I'm going to be up underneath the dome light and I knew it was going to be really hard to get this guy off and I really didn't want to break it. But man, I just couldn't figure out how to take it off. Well, come to find out, it does not slide off this way, and it doesn't slide off this way. 
You can't squeeze these clamps together because that just pulls it in tighter. Um, these little latches click. I don't even know where these little these little prongs click at. But all I know is that what you want to do, you don't have to remove the power window switch, but what you got to do is you got to pry this up a little bit. And if you can get under that tab and pry it up, the whole thing will sort of pop out. I think I ended up popping it out this way because I had got that switch removed, and so I kind of bent the sensor. Ooh, shoot. Yeah, did you see that wiggle? I have a feeling the sensor is broken. I'll have to, I'll have to mess with it. Well, I'm not gonna use this one anyway because I'm gonna use mine, but hopefully I won't break mine. So be careful with the sensor. This one might be trashed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in, click it in, and then, oh boy, let's see if I can remove it without damaging anything. Do you pull it this way, pry it up. Get into that edge, because that's got a little lip on it too. Maybe I'll go this way. Ah, here we go. There it goes. Oh, nice. Now you notice it's bowing out a little bit. So I don't know how well, you know, how many times you can get away with that. I just did it twice. This is old and brittle. I, I hope I don't have to do it again. I hope mine works in the car. Well, I know mine works in the car right now. I just hope I don't break it on the way out. This guy, he might be toast. But anyway, so that's the way you, know, you go about taking this guy out. You're gonna pry it up from the side. Um, you may have to take off the window thing. You might be able to get it to work from the outside. I couldn't get it to work from the outside, but since this broke, I was just all up in there. I was thinking about taking this housing off because there's two pry things here, but this was not meant to be removed ever. So you can take off this housing, but you will definitely crack these guys. I would just glue them back together again later. Um, I got a little leftover plug thing. I don't know what was going on with this car. It almost looked like, I don't know. It, it's obviously they, they spliced it you know, into the other car. Who knows what the history of that is. Uh, this guy, the reason I'm a little bit, uh, you know, I'd like to make the other one work is because this guy's got a broken tab here. It's got a crack here. And it's got a crack here and I'm slightly anal. Um, but it's got a sweet knob and it has a much better mechanism than the other one. It's nice and crisp. And honestly, the light switch works better too. I'm kind of thinking I'm going to keep those together. So if I have time in the ice storm, I uh, kind of stop something to go out there and have Lisa film me trying to plug this in, this in, in situ. Uh, but for now, when you go to disassemble it, this is the bugaboo and you will probably break these parts and uh, have some crazy glue and get ready to go to town with some modern lighting in a 1980s car. Thanks for sharing, what is it? Valentine's Day. Valentine's Thank you for sharing Valentine's Day morning with me. And have a good one.